What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of G's Garage. Today we are going to be working on just some hot rod maintenance, things that, you know, it's getting nice out again. We should probably start taking a look at making sure wheel bearings are looking good, brakes are good, things like that. So today we're going to focus on how to pack wheel bearings, how to make sure our preload and stuff on the bearings is correct, and we're going to go and work our way through shimming brakes. Um, so on the truck, we run a Ford Mustang II front end. So it runs a Ford, or actually it runs a GM metric front disc brake setup. Also, we're gonna go through and we're gonna change the front uh, brake lines. They're just a little bit too close to the coilover and everything else that I, than what I'm actually you know comfortable with. So when we pull off the wheel, I'll figure out how to show you all exactly what's going on, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. But before we start, please do me a huge favor: like and subscribe down at the bottom. It's free. It's just going to help the channel grow, and I'll be able to bring you more cool content. And it's, we're also going to be able to go out and you know expand right the more likes the, and the more comments and the more subscriptions that we have to the channel the more people that are going to be exposed to it so let's let's help us grow and let's get at it so here we have our front brakes we're going to learn how to actually pack bearings and everything else um, how to install the seals on the rear and on the front, I believe, the front seals. Um, and then we're also gonna go over the brake, uh, brake caliper set up on this. All right, so we're gonna also figure out the proper spacing for these. I figured out a couple months ago that with both brake pads in here, we got a little bit too much pressure on the, uh, on that outside pad. It's a simple enough fix. We just got to go through here and adjust where the actual uh, caliper bracket is. Very simple. It shouldn't take us too long to do. So let's get at it. All right, so all that holds these calipers on here are these two slide pins. This is going to be pretty much the same for every older car, be it Ford, Chevy, Dodge, whatever it may be. And then there is our caliper. All right, so can you hear that? Can you hear that? Yeah, it's because there's no grease in this. All right, so whenever you're dealing with a brake caliper, right? You never let it hang. So let's just find some nice safe place we can set it. So we don't have any extra tension on the lines. Then, oh, that's just hand tight there. Pull this off. There we go. So we got our front bearing. Need a little, uh, little, little gummy. We got a rear right there. Should slide right off. Sometimes these back ones will not slide off and you have to get through that race. Be very careful if you have to cut through it, not to mar your actual spindle. And that can be a recipe for disaster. All right, so let's uh, jump over to the workbench and we'll get some grease in these suckers. All right, so whenever you're dealing with any kind of bearings like this, I always like to go through some with a little bit of brake clean, kind of nice and cleaned out. You know, never know what has got in them. Clean 
them out. Get them nice and nice and clean. It's a little brake clean. You can hit them with some acetone. It don't really matter. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little grease right there in your palm, just like that. Take our bearing. We're just gonna start scooping like that, making sure we're pushing it up into there. See that? Okay, we'll get it like that. We'll set it down. Scoop it out like that. Put that back in our hand. And get back at it. We're just, what we're doing is we're just shoving that grease down into these bearings. It's not a clean job, I'll tell you that right now. But it's a job that needs to be done nonetheless. Alrighty. So. I just like to apply some outward pressure with my two fingers like that. Making sure the inside race doesn't spin. And we're just going to do just just like that just keep rolling it around just making sure there's grease everywhere this is one of those things where you can never have too much just like that all right that one's done all right set that down get some more grease for the others right there in the palm go and it's gonna be the exact same for the other side so I don't think I really need to show you the other side do I no you're here you're smart than that all right now that we have these all greased up and gorgeous let us move on to installing them on in the hub and we will put in our seals so then those are all done done and dusted all right so here is our brake rotor and wheel hub all together in one so this is the back side we just take our nice greased 
bearing, drop it on in there. Make sure it's nice and nice and smooth like that. Through that, we grab our actual seal. So you can see that. You see the little lip. See a lip right there? That's going to go up. Do it like that. Just get it nice and square. Don't worry. I, I saw you. I saw you looking at me. So this is just part of a seal driving kit. Find one that fits. Yeah, that's that fits, it's just a little bit too close. A little bit too close. So I'm just going to bump it up. So you can do two things with these. You can drive in tapered races, like what the uh, actual bearing sits into. Or you can turn it around and then you got yourself a nice seal installer. They're cheap. I mean, I think this one's like probably like 30 bucks, something like that. There's no high spots. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. We have a seal install. Now there's no seal on the front. We just have a cap that protects it from the outside. Because when we when we install this, right? When we put this bearing in here. That there's a washer that sits right against this. All right. And then our cap, we got washer, nut, lock, cotter pin. And then this goes over top of that and protects the whole darn thing. And it's easy as that. One deal. One is done. Don't need to show you the other side. It's the exact same process. So. Here's our spindle. It's also usually a good idea just throw a little grease on the spindle and around this back because that's where that seal is going to sit. We don't want it to start off dry. A little grease is going to go in and out of there, you know, it's no big deal. So we're just going to throw a little bit of grease through here, just a little bit on the spindle, and that's going to, you know, just ensure that we have maximum lubrication.
Just need a little bit of a, a little love. All right. So after we get that all done, we have a keyed, uh, there it is. We have a keyed washer. Washer goes on. Back meow. Then our nut. So. Oh yeah, that's not much better. That sounds right there. So how do we tighten these down, right? How do we know when it's tight enough? Like I was taught. You might be taught different. And it might work good for you. But you know, different strokes, different folks. So we get our socket on here. And we just tighten until we can't turn it. There we go. Really difficult to turn. Strong, I'm not that strong now. Huh? Alright, so we got nice and tight there, ensuring that our bearings are seated. And then back it off a smidge. Back it off a smidge until it starts going really smoothly. Good. There we go. That easy. All right. I mean, it took us what? If we're really just hammering through, probably 10, 15 minutes, and we know that we have fresh wheel bearings for the season coming up. I like to think that's pretty uh, pretty worth the time. And then this is just a castle lock, so that will go over that, like that. And we have our cotter pin. Our pin goes in. Done deal. I'm gonna get our dust cap. Put those right in there like that. Just trying to center it real quick. I don't think it's gonna center for me. Oh. Come on, just center for me. Alright, it's not gonna hold for the center. Maybe we'll skip this part. How's that sound? Can, can I just skip this? Please? 
This is embarrassing now. All right, we're skipping it. Thanks. All right, so we got it on. Invention is born out of necessity, right? So I ended up making this. The issue was I couldn't seat all the way around it. So I just took a piece of tubing, piece of quarter, yeah, quarter inch sheet, and then welded a big old wide five axle nut on it. Yeah, kind of see it. Sorry if this is blurry. This is a new, uh, new technique I'm not used to yet. There we go. Uh, oh. So, put that on there, smack the back with a hammer, like butter. All right, so I got the brake caliper on, and I don't know if it's just because it's never been, you know, all the way torqued on or what, but I mean, we're good, you know. That's, that looks pretty good. So, the issue that we were having with our brake line, let me get you guys in there. Can I get you closer? Uh, there you go. So the issue with our brake line is we're getting very close to the coilover, as you can see there. So what I decided to do, I got a Another fitting, let me, let me get you in there, right? Yeah, so we got another fitting, all right? But it just has the Dash 3 AN connector there. Now I went out and ended up finding an AN line and brake line from Willwood with a 90 degree. So it's gonna allow us to come straight out from the caliper, right? Which was, no, God, the lighting's terrible. Yeah, so calipers here, right? So it's gonna allow us to come straight out the side and tie directly in to our, our brake line there. So let's go. We got this. You have your banjo bolt, copper washer, banjo bolt, or banjo, copper washer. Just like that. All right, here's that. Oh, it's got a little bit more flex in it too. That's kind of nice. And there we go. New brake line ran with no interference with our coilover. There we go. Get you in for that close up. All right, so right here, we have it coming straight down now. Up, over and up, just like that. Nothing crazy, nothing super cool. The issue with this one was it only come off one way. And with it sitting just like that, it was literally like almost into the coilover. And if you had to go full lock, it would shove it pretty much in there. Last thing you need going around a corner and hitting a bump is your brakes to clamp up. So, I think we're good. Not too worried about that. 
maybe I'll make a little tab right there to one more side to do and that is it pretty darn simple hey guys thank you so much for watching another episode of G's Garage really appreciate all the love and support if you stayed to the end hey do me a favor subscribe like share comment if I did something that you wouldn't do it this way tell me and we'll, we'll debate about it in the comments hey once again thank you so much and as always make it faster